I want to continue our study on the blessings of being saved. And uh, the blessing I'm going to talk about this morning is probably something that you never considered as being a blessing. And I never really thought about it till I started this series. But uh, this series has been a, a number uh, of sermons, probably 10 or more. But I want to preach this morning on the blessing of having a church, a place of surrender and submission. A place of surrender and submission. Uh, basically, surrender and submission are showing respect to an authority. Uh, when we show submission, we show respect to that authority in our lives and honor to the position that they hold. And, uh, you know, some people think, well, I'll show respect when the people earn it. Or I'll, you know, uh, basically it's, it's a kind of a, a rebellious attitude. And uh, submission is not based on whether somebody deserves it. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an obedience to God. And uh, there's a lot of rebellion in, in our culture today. It, it, it is a rebellious culture. And I think that is manifested in the amount of crimes. Now, I'm not saying uh, lack of submission in, I, I, is the cause of all problems, but I, I do think uh, it's involved. And it, our prisons are literally bulging at the doors, and there's people uh, that have done crimes um, that are out there that should be behind bars. And uh, society uh, really has change where, where uh, it, it seems that th there's very little submission to the laws of the land. Now, if, if you don't learn to submit, you do what you think is right in your own eyes. And there's a book in the Bible all about that. Ecclesiastes. No, Ecclesiastes is under the sun. Priscilla told you. Judges. Judges. The Bible says in Judges, in two places, in those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which is right in his own eyes. Uh, every man did that which is right in his own eyes. No submission to, to authority. Um, <laughs> you just think about this. Adam would not submit to the authority of God. God said, don't partake of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam had to submit, right? It was expected of him. And he said, no. And look at what happened. Sin entered the world. Think about uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh continually said, no, I will not submit to God. I will not do what he says. And a whole nation was destroyed. And uh, a lot of Christians' lives are not what they should be. They don't have the joy of the Lord. There's a lot of uh, problems in their lives. And, and, and so, uh, a lot of it, is, for some, is a lack of submission. Now, let me say this. God doesn't want us to be spineless. He expects us to be strong in Him and strong for Him. S submission doesn't mean, oh, we're doormats. Let people walk and wipe their feet on us. Not at all. He... Uh, God doesn't want weak-willed, easily manipulated people. Okay? That's not what it's talking about at all. Paul was strong. He, he said he refused to, to, uh, to submit for, for even a second in Galatians uh, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And because a false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Jesus Christ, that they may bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. P Paul said, no, we wouldn't be some uh, subjection to false doctrine, not even, not even for an hour. So, uh, I, I'm not talking about weak-willed, uh, wishy-washy people. I'm talking about surrender to the proper authority. Now, what is submission and surrender? Well, submission is uh, resigning or yielding. And surrender is, is basically the same thing, to yield. Now, 
I want you to take your Bible and turn to Luke for a minute. I, I want you to see this. This is really important. Luke 2. You know, they went up, uh, Joseph and, and Jesus' mother Mary went to Jerusalem. They went up, Jerusalem, when it says they went up, what are they, why does it say up? Jerusalem is up on, on a hill, a mountain. Uh, so they went up. It's interesting when you, when you read, you just uh, notice these little things. But they went up to Jerusalem, and uh, they w went uh, for which feast? Feast of Passover. And uh, they leave, and Jesus isn't there. And they come back looking for him. And they said, why did you do this? In verse 49, he said, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? <coughs> And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Jesus was subject to Joseph and Mary. Think about that for a moment. Jesus on earth was still God. And he was subject to to his mother and his stepfather. Uh, I'm sure there's times when he knew something was better to be done and they told him to do it and he did what he was told to do. He submitted. Now that is the greatest example of submission you can find, isn't it? And uh, so he submitted to authority. And even in his flesh, when he was going to be crucified, in his flesh, he did not want to die. It was a horrible, horrible death. He didn't want uh, to suffer that. I mean, he, you wouldn't, would you? But what do you say? Father, if thou be willing to remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He is our example. He submitted. No. Question is, who do we submit to? First and foremost, we submit to God. Now, I am not going to give all the verses right now. I'll, I'll give verses later. Uh, but I'm just going to talk about uh, various uh, things that we submit to. We submit to God. Uh, God is our Lord. You, you know, you read Lord Jesus Christ, L-O-R-D. He's our master. He is our authority. Uh, not my will, but thy will. You know, people say, well, I, 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 I don't want to follow the, what it says here in the Bible, and I, I don't want to follow what it says here. You don't pick and choose. You're supposed to what? Submit and surrender. And until you do that, it's kind of like a battle between you and God in life. God says, I would like you to do this, and you say, no. And God keeps trying to get you to do what's right. God always wants you to do what's right. Uh, you know, uh, I, I re read this, and, and I thought it was pretty good. A good pilot must have a healthy fear of gravity. This resp respect is not in the conscious mind of most pilots, but it for for forms the f foundation of everything they do. When a headstrong pilot comes up against gravity, Gravity will win, no matter how strongly the pilot opposes it. A pilot who does not respect gravity is not around to tell us about it. In a sense, the he this healthy respect of gravity is similar to our living in submission to God. Uh, and I thought that was a uh, very good uh, illustration. Uh, a uh, pilot that fights gravity will soon learn gravity wins. Listen, you can resist God, but God is in control. Um, uh, Lewis Sperry Schaefer uh, was president of Dallas Seminary in the uh, 1940s. 
and there was a banquet, and the banquet went on and on, and he was supposed to preach at the end of the banquet. But by the time uh, it came for him to preach, the time was up, so he, uh, he, he announced his subject, the reasonableness of fully surrendering our lives to God. And uh, because of the lateness of the hour, he just gave the three points of his message. Why surrender to God? Because God is all wise and knows better than anyone else what's best for my life. Isn't that the truth? God knows best. Why would I not to surrender? Because God knows best. Second of all, he is almighty and he has the power to accomplish what is best for me. And third of all, God loves me more than anybody else does. A loving God that knows the best for me and wants the best for me and has the power to do it, why wouldn't I surrender to him? And so he concluded, therefore the most logical thing I can do is surrender my life to God. What more can I say? What more need I say? And then uh, we are to submit to the pastor. And again, I will I'll give verses for this later. But a pastor is, is uh, what's a, a, another word for pastor? The, the office that's used. Oh, go ahead. Overseer, a bishop. Uh, he oversees it. You have to surrender to the overseer. It's kind of like, a, I'm not saying a pastor is a boss, but uh, at work, you want to do one thing and your boss tells you to do another, you got to do what the boss says. And then, uh, civil authority. There's a book in the Bible, uh, a chapter in the Bible uh, that tells us that we have to submit to civil authority. Does anybody know what chapter and book that is? Romans 13? 13? Yeah. Romans 13. Uh, we are to submit to, to authority of the government. We are to actually submit to one another in love. And if you don't learn to submit to proper authority, you're living in conflict constantly. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, here I am, and uh, I say, I don't want... I don't like that this speed limit is 60 kilometers here or 50 kilometers here. And I say, I'm going to go 80. I am continually in conflict with the law of the land. And eventually, what's going to happen? I'm going to get caught. And there's going to be consequences to me not submitting, right? It's, it's, it is crazy. You know, I... I have seen things on the news where somebody gets caught shoplifting and they, and they complain. Uh, I, I needed that makeup. I should be able to take it. What? <laughs> you, you have to submit to the, the laws of the land. So why is it a blessing to learn to submit? Well, learning to submit teaches us. It teaches us respect for authority. Uh, respect for authority is important in life. Uh, and, and, and coming to a church and, and even hearing a message about surrender is very good for us. We need to respect authority. <laughs> you know what? It helps us to learn and to grow. Uh, it helps us in interpersonal relationships. When, uh, you know, we're not children here, but, uh, you know, children, what are you what are we supposed to do? You're supposed to submit to your parents. Uh, they're, they're the authority. It helps us in society. It helps us get along with each other, okay? Uh, uh, the Bible talks about uh, submitting one to another. So I have a disagreement with you. You know what? I just submit to you. If it's not a, a major thing, I can just submit. Uh, now, if you don't yield to God, you're going to be like Israel. And Israel, God says they were like stiff-necked people. Listen to Second Chronicles. And uh, while I'm reading there, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 6. But 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Uh, God said Israel were stiff-necked people. They just wouldn't do what God wanted them to do. You know, it's like... I, I think um, when they went to Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea, what happened in Kadesh Barnea? Anybody? They were supposed to go into the promised land, and what did they say? 
No, we won't go. And so then God said, okay, don't go in. And so what did they say? Well, okay, we're going to go in. <laughs> and they were defeated. You know, just what we are going to do what we think is right. And, and, and they were stiff-necked. And it always ends up in, 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 in uh, difficulties. So, listen to this. You either submit yourself to God or you end up yielding yourself to sin. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. You either yield yourself to God or you're submitting yourself to sin. Okay, so I asked you to go to Romans chapter 6. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We are to yield ourselves rather than to sin to God. You listen to it. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. And then it says your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. What is your members? Your body. So I am to yield to God and not unto sin. Look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye yield. Sorry, to whom you obey. Whether out of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. If you yield to your own personal desires... You are a slave to who? Yourself. You're, you're to yield to God. Look at verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. He's saying, listen, before you were saved, ye yielded yourself to, to, to sin. Now, yield yourself to God, unto righteousness. As a young man, I did whatever wickedness I wanted to do. But now I'm saved. I yield myself to God. He changed me. And God wants to. Listen, you will never have spiritual victory till you have surrender. I have heard this verse misquoted so many times. This is what is quoted. Resist, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Has anybody heard that? That's a misquote. That's not what the Bible says. Take your Bible and turn to James. You know, people, they, they don't do the first part, and they don't like the first part. James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Does it say, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you? No, it says, submit to God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So if you're not submitting to God, is the devil going to flee from you? No. And, you know, I, I, well, I've, I've heard, I mean, I've heard it all. Uh, but people say, well, I don't need to go to church. Well, you're saying I don't need to submit to God because God commanded you to go. I don't need to read my Bible. Oh, oh you don't? And, 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 and people are struggling with, 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 with uh, uh, temptations from Satan and, and all these spiritual battles and they're not getting victory. And sometimes it's because they're not submitting. So, listen. Let's go to Romans. Uh, I do not like to pay my taxes. 
Anybody here like paying your taxes? <laughs> I can't say I r completely resent it, but I, I suppose I do in a way, uh, because I see, you know, the government wasting the money that they take from me. And I don't like it. But you know what I'd have to do? Pay my taxes. Romans 13. Let every soul. Who does every soul mean? Take your finger and go like this. Me. It means me, right? Let every soul be subject under the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Now listen to me. Was the Roman government <coughs> a good, kind, generous government to, to non-Roman citizens? Or, uh, people that weren't Roman citizens? It was great if you're a Roman citizen. You had a lot, a lot more. But uh, not everybody was a Roman citizen. But it said, let every soul. That's, that's tough, isn't it? Verse 2. Whoso therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Verse 5. Wherefore ye must be sub, needs be subject, not only for wrath's sake, but for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Sorry, honor to whom honor. Oh. Not something that I really like. I don't... I mean, I wish my government were, were doing uh, better things with the, the, the taxes, right? Anybody else feel that way? What do I do? Well... I pay my taxes and I pray fervently. That's what I do. We need to pray for our government. And so we have a responsibility. So I, I say I don't feel like following this law. Too bad. Follow it anyway. You follow the laws of the land as they don't as long as they don't contradict God's laws. You always find follow the highest power. So if I'm in, 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 in the Canadian Navy and my sergeant tells me uh, to do this and then my captain tells me to do something different, who do I obey? The captain. Why? Higher authority. Higher authority. What is the highest authority or who is the highest authority? God. Daniel was said, told not to pray. So what do you do? It says, uh, well, you know the, 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 the decree was made. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened and his chambers toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his kneels, knees three times a day and he prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a fourth time. He said, I am going to pray regardless. Did he, have, did he have respect to, to authority? Did Daniel have respect to authority? He certainly did. Read the book of Daniel. I'm not going to go through it. He showed a lot of respect to authority. But he submitted to the highest authority. His friends, when they were told to bow to, a, to an idol, said, no. You're the king. We respect you. But no, we're not going to do that. So um, we do respect our uh, the authority of our our government and uh, but when the government says you can't read your Bible you know what I'm going to do what am I going to do read my Bible I might even go outside and read it outside I'm going to obey God but listen I don't have the choice and say well I don't like this speed limit I'm not going to obey it 
I don't like this tax. I'm not going to pay it. I don't have that. I need to submit. And if I submit and say it, I, it, that, that, that um, frustration of paying my taxes is not there, you know? I just have to do it. This is what God said. Okay, I'm going to do it. Now, we are to submit to one another. The Bible says, Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. First uh, Peter 5.5, 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the other, elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. So, you know what? <coughs> you and I, uh, we disagree about something. You know what? I can just submit to you. As long as it is, 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 is not uh, something contrary to the word of God. We're going to paint the church. We're going to paint this building. And um, Gregor wants pink polka dots. And uh, I say, no, I, I don't like pink polka dots. But he really wants pink polka dots. You know what I mean? I can surrender. I don't think it's a great idea. I hope he doesn't want pink polka dots. I don't think he does. But you know what? You don't have to make a, a fight about things in life. The Bible says, listen to it. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. People are so willing to fight about things. In church, we learn to submit. And it's a wonderful thing. And then, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. I covered this a bit before. But God says a pastor is a gift to the church. And... Uh, God said pastors are, are overseers. The Bible says in Acts 20, 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, uh, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. By the way, that's a good uh, verse to uh, refute uh, Jehovah Witnesses and, and uh, other cults because it's the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Blood. Who shed his blood? Jesus Christ. But listen to it. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and all the flock of God, which the Holy Ghost, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Pastors are overseers or bishops. First uh, Thessalonians five twelve, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Okay, so let's look at uh, Hebrews 13, verse 7. Remember that them which have the rule over you and have spoken to you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering their, the end of their conversation. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch over your souls as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Uh, and then uh, verse 24. Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints, they of Italy salute you. Notice uh, uh, three verses here in Hebrews 13, saying that, that, that you just have to submit yourself to the pastor. There, there's going to be a time that you're going to disagree with me. And as long as I'm not uh, contrary to the word of God, you know what you need to do? Submit. Somebody has to be in authority. Somebody has to make the final decision. You might not agree with this, that decision, but what do you do? Just submit. Just submit. Uh, I have worked with pastors under pastors and I've not agreed with them and you know what I just do when when I was in the situation just submit sometimes God allows that to to uh, to to cause you to grow spiritually and uh, but the most important thing is this submitting to God listen so the things in your life that God you know you're supposed to be doing and you're not doing that's because you're not submitting to God. 
I would encourage you to have a tender heart and say to God, God, I surrender. What's the next word? It starts with A. All. Here I am, God. I surrender all. I submit to you in everything. Lead me and guide me. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. The answer is submission. What a wonderful thing. And you know what? When you submit to God, it changes your relationship with God. He really does become your Lord then. And you know what it is to have fellowship with him. You will not have fellowship with God when you're not surrendered to God. Let's close in a word of prayer.